Hello everybody, it's Tido Miner and welcome back to the fourth part of making a sliding puzzle game in Unity. In this part, we are going to write some codes for checking if the puzzle is solved or not. And also we're going to create a timer for the game. So let's start. For checking if the puzzle is solved or not, open the tile script. In here we need to uh, make a public boolean. So let's write public bool in right place. Uh, this is false at default, but when our puzzle tile is in the correct place, we have to make this boolean true. So in here, when the target position equals to the correct position, it means if the puzzle tile is in the correct position, we have to say in right place equals to true. And otherwise, if it's not on the correct position, we have to make this false. In right place equals to false. Go to the game script. In here, we have to write a for each loop. But first, let's write int correct tiles. It equals to zero. And now let's write a for each loop for each open parenthesis in here a variable a in our tiles in here let's write if a dot in right place is true then add one to the correct tiles also we have to add another statement in here if a is not null we have to check if the a is not null because one of the elements in our array tiles null so if it's not null then check if it's in right place if it is, then add one to the correct tiles. Now we have to write an if. If number of our correct tiles is equal to number of all of the tiles, except one because one of them is empty space, if they are equal. For now, we are just going to use the debug the log and it says you won. Go to the start and comment the shuffle in here because we don't want to shuffle the game. Now let's return to the Unity editor and let's play the game. Okay, you can see it says if you won, but if I move this down, it doesn't say it anymore. So it's working, but we want to show the player a panel when he solves the puzzle instead of this message. So let's create an UI image in here. Let's make it black and let's just decrease the alpha, make it transparent. In here, set the anchor preset to this one at the bottom right. And you have to write zero in all of these fields in here. Now it, can, it covers the whole screen. Now we need to create a new UI image inside of this black area, but first let's rename this object that covers the whole screen to black image. It's better, now let's increase the size of this image in width and height and change the sprite and the color of its image component. Okay, now let's add a text to this panel. Let's say puzzle solved, let's make it bigger. Let's set the alignment to the center and the middle and the center move it up and like this when players solve the puzzle we're going to show this panel to him now we need a button in this panel let's create a ui button make it bigger and let's change its text to try again when player press this button this thing just will be reloaded when the puzzle was solved it showed us the yo one message many times but we just needed to do it once so let's open the game script in here we need to write the boolean boolean variable so let's write private boolean is finished when player solves the puzzle we are going to make this boolean true so let's write when player solve the puzzle we say is finished equals to true and we are going to put this part of code into an, a statement if game is not finished if it's finished it's false just check if the puzzle solve when the game is not finished if the game finished you don't need to check the tiles anymore now if we play the game and solve the puzzle we're going to see the u1 message just once but we don't want to show the player a message that says u1 we're going to enable this panel when he solves the puzzle so let's create a serialized field a game object variable game object and let's name it end panel and when we when the player solve the puzzle we are going to enable this panel so in here instead of this debug the lock let's write end panel dot set active true save the script and let's go back to the unit in here we have to assign the black image game object to the end panel variable and now if we play the game and when we solve the puzzle it's going to show us this end panel this is working good but this button doesn't work so let's go back to the game script. In here we have to write a method for the button. It should be a public method. So let's write public void play again. When player clicks on the button, this method gonna be called. 
For restarting the game, we just need to reload the scene. So let's write scene manager dot load scene. For using the scene manager, you have to add using scene management at the start of your script, but JetBrains Rider did it for me automatically. Inside the parentheses in front of load scene, we have to write the index or the name of the scene that we want to load. For reloading the current scene, we're going to use scene manager dot get active scene dot name. So we are going to reload the current scene that we are in. For making this code working, we have to add our scene to the build setting. So open the build setting. In here, click on the add open scene to add the current scene to the build setting. Let's enable the end panel, select the button, scroll down, and in on click event, let's add an action. Drag the main camera into this field and set the method to play again method in game script. Now when player clicks on this button, play again method in game script will be called. That works good. Now we need to create a timer for the game. For that, let's create a new script, name it timer script, open it. Let me just remove these lines. In here, we need to write two public variables, public int seconds and minutes. We just need seconds and minutes because we are not going to count hours and solving this puzzle doesn't take hours. In here, we have to create a new void. It can be private, private void, add to second. When this void gets called, we are going to add one to the seconds. So let's write seconds plus plus seconds plus plus add one to the seconds if seconds is more than 59 if our seconds are more than 59 then we are going to add one to the minute minute plus plus and we're going to set the seconds to zero at the end we are going to tell him to repeat itself every one second so let's write invoke we have to use name of add to second and we're going to write one for the time. So it calls itself after one second for one time. It's just going to repeat itself forever. In the start, we just need to call it add to second. That's it. Now, if you add this script to the main to the main camera, you can see seconds and minutes. Let's play the game and see what happens. Okay, you can see seconds going up. If I just increase it to 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, our minute is 1. This is working good, but we need to show the seconds and the minutes on the game screen. So in here, let's create a UI text. Let's put it at the top left of the screen. Also set the anchor preset to the top left in here. Let's make it bigger and make it white and increase the size. This is the time. Let's just write zero zero in here and let's change the name to the time text. In the time script, we need to create a text variable and assign our timer text on it. For making a text script, we need to import UI library. So at the top of the script, let's write using unity engine.ui. Now so let's write serialize field text. Now you can see that we have text in here and let's name it time text. In the add two seconds after the condition, let's write time text equal time text dot text equals two we're going to show our time in this format minutes colon and then seconds so in here let's write time text equals to minutes plus a colon and plus seconds that's it save it now into the unity editor select the main camera in here we have to drag this time text in here let's play the game and see if it works okay you can see the timer is counting and we can see the timer in the game screen. Now we need to stop the timer when player solves the puzzle because if we just solve the puzzle, the timer keeps counting. But we just need to stop it. So in the ti timer script, let's write a public void stop timer. In here, we are going to write cancel invoke because we are invoking this void. So if we use a cancel invoke, it's gonna just stop. Cancel invoke name of we have to use name of for using invoke at two seconds now let's go back to the game script in here when player solves the puzzle we are going to write get component we are going to get the timer script and we are going to call a stop a stop timer save the script and let's play the game you can see when player solves the puzzle it doesn't count anymore Let's enable the end panel in here. I'm going to add another text. When player solves the puzzle, we're going to show his time at this panel and we're going to just disable this time text at there. In here, let's just set the alignment to the center and the middle, increase the font size, and this is the time. 
open the game script in here we need to write a serialized field text variable serialized field text let's name it end panel timer text also we have to import the ui library in this script too jetburns writer just did it for me automatically so when player solves the puzzle we have to change the text of this ui text in here in here we need to access the timer script and get the time from it we are not going to use get component method again because it's an expensive method and it's not good to use it twice when we can just do it once so when we get timer script for the first time we are going to just save it in a variable and then we are going to use it so let's cut the get component from here let's create a new variable var a and paste it in here now we save the component in a variable named a and for accessing it we can just write a and for changing the text of the end panel time text let's write end panel time text dot text equals to a dot second minutes a dot minutes plus a colon plus a dot seconds also we have to go to the timer script in here when this stop timer get called we need to just disable this timer uh, at here at the top left so let's write time takes dot game object dot set active false we're going to just disable this one in here now select the main camera, we need to assign this end panel time takes in here. Let's just drag it. I'm just going to disable the end panel and let's play the game. Now if you play the game and solve the puzzle, you can see the timer at the end menu. It's working but it's not good to show time like this because it's not even like a time. For making our time looks something like this, we need to add a zero before the seconds and minutes when they are less than 10. It means when they have only one digit. For do such a thing, open the time script. For adding an extra zero before seconds and minutes when there are less than 10, we can just use an if statement. But we are going to use some kind of a statement that I call one line statement. For writing this kind of a statement, we have to open parentheses, then we have to write a condition. After the condition, we put a question mark and we have to write a value that we want this statement return when the condition is true. Then we put a colon, then we have to write the value that we want this statement returned when the condition is false. And then we close the parentheses. So for adding a zero before the seconds when it's less than 10, we have to write the condition if seconds is less than 10. Then we're going to put a question mark and when it's the seconds is less than 10, we're going to return a zero as a string. If it's not less than 10, we have to put a colon and we are going to return an empty a string and then we are going to add it to the seconds. So in the timer script, let's first do it for the minutes. Before the minutes, open parentheses. When minutes is less than 10, question mark, we are going to return a zero as a string. If it's not less than 10, we are going to return an empty a string and then we are going to add it to the minutes. We need to do the same thing for the seconds, so I'm just going to copy and paste it for the seconds, and then we have to change minutes to seconds. And that's it, let's play the games and see what, if it works or not. As you can see, it is working good, but we have to do the same thing for the end panel timer, because we haven't changed that yet. So let's open the timer script and copy that part of code, go to the game script, and when player solves the puzzle, and when we set the value of the end panel timer text, we have to paste that code. But we have to do some changes. We have to write a dot minutes and a dot seconds. And that's it. I'm going to finish this part in here. In the next part, we're going to create a high score system for the game. If you liked the video and learned anything new, press the like button and subscribe my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, ask it in the comments and I try to answer them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.